Let's go through a code example of creating a star PF. I can see you watching me. And that is a physical file. Let's create a physical file. Let's create a physical file together. I can't actually even save this yet because I've got to publish this video up to YouTube and post it on here. So hopefully you can see this big sign on screen. Here I am signed on one of my customers' boxes. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a physical file. It's really simple. Um, I'm going to create a name file. I'm going to put it in QDDS source, which is where we store our source. And I'm going to use PDM to display my source code. So I'm going to do it all in the green screen. So for those beginners that haven't got the money for RDI or um, code or any of the other code editors out there, if you just want to do it through terminal mode, let's do it that way. So I'll start off by doing... What's going to start with a work with a PDM? Let's take it right from the top. Start PDM. STRPDM to go into PDM. And it says, what do you want to work with? Libraries, objects, or members? We want to work with members because we're going to create a source member. I'm going to look, work with QDDS source, which is in my library called Litten N. And I'm going to create one called customer something. This is just a subset, the view of this DDS source. If you don't have a DDS source file in your library, I'm sure you do, you will use the create source pf command. You could type in QDDS source, your library there, press enter, and it will create a source file. We're looking at the, my source file, QDDS source, in my library in PDM, and members in there. There'll be lots and lots of members, which um, I didn't mention in that previous lesson. <laughs> I don't know why. A schema is a library, and the library contains many, many files. Files are also known as tables in the SQL world. Files can be physical, they contain data, a table, or they can be logical, they are an index or a view of that data. Now, the IBM I world is different to all the other SQL databases out there, at least as far as I know anyway. Um, any file can have members within that file. Think of it as chapters within the book. So if you go back to my bookshelf analogy, we've got the bookshelf, that's your library. Within that, we have lots and lots of files there, the books. When you open a book up and you read it, they may or may not, it might just have one chapter, right? Here's my one book, that's it. Or they may have two chapters or three chapters separating that book. In this case, if we had three, that would be three members within the file. And when I go to read that file, I could say, read the file and just read the first member. It would read the first chapter. Or I could say, read the second member. It would read the second one. Or the third, read the third. Or I could override the file and say, read all the members. And it will just read all of them through. It's kind of an old-fashioned technique. Something that was used a lot in the olden days. In the olden days of the system 3X and AS400 machines. Not so much anymore. I suspect it's not used so much anymore because SQL doesn't really like it. There are ways we can get around it with SQL, creating a view to look at a specific member. Um, I'm not gonna to touch on that complicated stuff. Enough of the blather, let's get back to something very simple. Let's create a physical file. Here I'm in PDM, I'm gonna create a new member, okay? That's F6 create, see that down there? Let's create something. Let's create one called customer PF for physical file. What is the type? It's a PF. That's a physical file. And I'm going to call it a simple customer file. And I'm going to press enter. What SEU has done has taken me straight into source edit mode. Your SEU screen may look slightly different because I have mine in expert mode, um, which just hides all of the uh, function keys. Uh, full screen mode, I think it's that one there. So yours probably looks like this with the SEU thing at the top and the command keys down the bottom. So we're gonna insert a line within SEU. If we do an I to insert, we just get the free format where you can type it in. But if we wanna prompt up the input line, we can do an I and a P to prompt it up. So we can do an IP. And here it prompts up. It knows we're in a, a source type of PF. Do you see that there? So what it's immediately prompting up is a physical file format. So 
the first thing that we're going to do within our file is we're going to give it a record format name. So how we do this in DDS is we put an R for record format. How about I just call this record format, right? I could call it anything I like. There's my record format. Let's add two fields. One we'll call first name, one we'll call surname. So we don't use that name type here. We put the name of the field. I'll call it first name. I could put a reference in here and what that's saying is get the size of this field from another field in the file or another field in another file entirely so for example let's say you defined um, uh, an order number and you said the order numbers can be 10 long you might want to reference that so if you ever change that 10 to a 15 or and every other file was referencing that size if you recompile the whole database they would all look back to the new size and they would all get bigger we're going to create first name Let's make it um, I don't know, 50 long and we'll say it's an alphanumeric. So we're not going to put any decimal positions. We could say it's an input and output of both. We'll leave that blank. And let's give it a text description of uh, my first name. I'm doing all of this in uppercase, just so it's clear for this example for the, the freshers. Okay, let's create a, a second one and we'll call this one surname. And we'll make this, just to keep it really simple, we'll make this uh, 50 alpha as well. Give it some text. Pretty simple stuff so far, you with me, right? So let's, how about record the age? Um, I'm going to record up to three digits. I'm going to say, I'm just going to make it three digits with zero decimal positions. Now... Yeah. I could have made it three alpha. It will be stored as a three alpha in the table. When I make it three numeric, it's stored different, differently in the database. By default, it's stored uh, as a type called packed. Let me prompt that line up by pressing F4 when I'm on the line. The data type here, if I press F1 on the data type, I can see the different types I can put in there. The default for numerics is packed decimal data. What this means is, let's say we're well, let's say we're doing a field that's three long, rather than storing three hexadecimal lumps of data. You know, this is hex A4, this is A7, and this is B3 or whatever those hex values are, taking up six bytes of file data. It will literally say, this is packed data. Let's store three one two three bytes of data. The good thing is, it leads to very small. Uh, database storage back in the days when even one megabyte was this god unseemly amount of storage storing as small as uh, space as you could was really important not so much nowadays the days of terabytes and petabytes and big full bytes whatever they are or if we don't want to store them as packed we can restore them as see this next one down here s for zoned s for zoned <laughs> I would have called it S for signed, which is what it actually means. You've got all these other types, binaries and floating points and date types and timestamps and blah, blah, blahs. I'm not going to cover those here because this is a simple example. But what I will do, I'm going to say this is three packed. Uh, let's put some text on there. I'm only doing this text because I'm going to show you something in a minute, right? And I'm going to repeat this line. I'm going to do RP in SEU, which is repeat the line, duplicates it. And let's store another numeric field, which we'll call um, shoe size. <laughs> and this time, we'll do it as signed. So you've got the difference, right? When we compile this and we look at the file, we'll see that age is stored just in three bytes of data, and the shoe size is now stored in a much bigger space. It'll be three hex double the storage basically because it would be three two part hex things it's easier to show you and the nice thing is that they will both store a plus or a minus sign but when you look at a file if it's defined as, as s for signed or zoned we can see it when we look at the file whereas packed is kind of this squished up value that when we look at it on terminal mode we just can't see what the data is um it's a physical file i could add a key here but i'm not going to because i'm going to show you logicals in a minute there's my really, really simple file. This file could go on for hundreds, nay, thousands of fields. 
So in SQL speak, this is a file. SQL calls it a table. Here I'm defining, excuse me, the fields within that file. In SQL, we call them the columns within the table. Each one of these will be stored as a row of data. That's what it's called in SQL, a row. Um, in DB2, the DDS way of seeing things, it isn't called a row, it's called a record. So a library is a schema, a file is a table, a record is a row, and a field is a column. Looks like I'm doing big fish, little fish, cardboard box, or maybe some martial arts training, but I'm doing neither of those. So let's come out, do an F3, and we'll save it. Let me compile it from in here. That's a 14 to compile. I'm going to leave all of the compile options to default. Maybe we'll go through those another day. But right now, I'm just going to compile this into my library, into Litten N. File created in Litten N. Okay, I'm going to use a neat little file editor that comes with um, IBM I, and it's called Update Data. If you do an up D, DTA, Update Data, this will create a little file editor program for you on the fly and let you edit the data in your file. So it says, what file do we want to edit? What did I call it? Cust PF. Something is blinking on and off here, one of my USB devices. If it's this camera that's turning on and off, or this mic, I'm going to be jolly miffed, I can tell you. Right. Um, Cust PF. So I'm going to do an up data on Cust PF. Here's my file. So straight away, it's recognized the file is empty and it's letting me enter my first field. So I'm going to enter one called me, uh, my surname. Um, I honestly don't know how old I am. I think I'm 54, but I might be 53, maybe even 55. I do know, however, that my shoe size is 14 because I'm a big old unit, I can tell you. So I'm going to save Nick Litton 54 and 14, and that's entered into the file. So if I just come out of this file now, there's my file saved. How about I um, have a quick look in this file using query? It's a quick and dirty way of doing this where you just say run query, if I prompt it up. The first value is asking you for a query name. We're not creating any queries here, so I'm just going to say none. And I'm just going to give the file name. So if you do run query, star none, and file name, again, it will create a little dynamic query on the on the fly and show you the file data. It's exactly the same as going into an SQL session and doing a select all from this file. I press enter. Here it shows me my one row of data. So up here it's given me my column names, first name, surname. Here is my row of data. Here is the relative record number in the file. They're going to be incrementing as I add new rows to that file, new records, and they're always unique. If they're not unique, you're really in trouble. So here we've got Nick, here we've got Litton. If I page over to the right by pressing Shift F8, I can see there's my age, there's my shoe size. Pretty good stuff, right? There's a physical file. Now, let me use the display PFM command, display physical file member, cust PF. This lets me look, poke straight in at the raw data in the file, and we'll see something slightly different here. So here, we're not seeing any of the glorious things that SQL gives us, like column headings, any other niceties. We're looking at raw data, so it's just telling us positions on the file. But look at this. Here's my name, which is 50 long, so it's from character 1 up to 50. Here's my surname, which is 50 long, so it's from 51 up to 100. And wait, here's my 014 for my shoe size, which I can see because it's signed. And here is my packed age. That doesn't look like my age, does it? And it's because in it's stored differently in hexadecimal. So when I just view the file, it just looks different. Luckily, from within this PFM, I can press F10, which is one of these more keys, F10 to display the hexadecimal. Are you ready to go a bit crazy? If we press F10, what we can see here is these are the hex values that relate directly to the um, output values, I'll call them. So you can see here that the letter N is a D5. The letter I is an 8.9. The letter C is an 8.3. The letter K is a 9.2. I know, just from years of programming with IBMI, 
that blank spaces are always stored as a four zero. That's why it goes four zero four zero four zero four. It's all of these blanks, right? Let me shift over to the right by pressing Shift Eight. You can see here it's still saying blank 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 blank. Oh, and then there's a little bunch of data in the middle. That's the hex representations of the word Litten. I'll keep going to the right. This is where it gets interesting. You can now see that the um, the the uh, age at position one hundred is stored as four zero. 54 so look that those three numbers are actually stored in two bytes of data pretty amazing stuff eh and it's led with i think it's led with whatever that value is and finishes with an f so if you had a 13 character number rather than storing it in 13 bytes of data it would store it in roughly half the size it just has a hex character saying this is the start of a pack number half the size and then a hex character saying this is the end of the number. Whereas a signed digit, you can see, is actually stored as F0, F1, F4. So it's just stored differently in the file. That's the only difference between packed and signed. Whenever you call an RPG program or a CL program, if it's using a file that has a packed value stored in the file, it will auto-magically unpack it and use it as a regular zoned number. So that's why you may get confused as a fresher using programs. You're like, why is this packed? Why is this signed? Um, packed is just the default to use less storage. Somehow I've waffled for 15 minutes talking about a simple customer physical file. There's a customer file. So I'm going to stop recording now and then we'll create a logical over this and play with that as well. See you on the flip side.